Falcon BMS has an excellent barrier combat air patrol training mission. That's BARCAP. Training exercise on the tactical engagements number 18. You're in a two-ship FF-16, so you have to go up against two different two-ships of MiGs. Uh, you do have five AMRAMs and some fuel tanks, a jammer, and a targeting pod. The goal is to prevent red air from trespassing your area of responsibility during your combat air patrol time of 30 minutes. You must have clear commit criteria to avoid confusion about how and when to engage the enemy. We're going to talk about that a little bit uh, in a minute here. Actually, I'm going to go over to the BMS menu here. Here's our bar cap light. And what we can see is that we've got steer 4 and steer 5. We're going to do a combat air patrol between those two steer points. Uh, bullseye is basically right underneath steer point 5 for ease of understanding the AWACS calls and reference points to bandits. We can see that we've only got 25 miles or less between us and the perimeter, uh, the northwest perimeter of this area of responsibility. And here we've only got about 10 miles between us and the northeast perimeter if we're at steer 5. So what we don't want to happen is uh, some MiGs to come in from this direction. Here they are at uh, 30 and then 20 miles and then we're within range of their lethal weapons, but they haven't broken into our uh, area of responsibility yet. So we're going to adjust the commit criteria to say that any bandits within 30 miles that is still hot aspect that is flying directly at us within 30 miles, which is this ring around bullseyes here, that's going to be our commit criteria for today. So there's just uh, no trying to run away to this southwest side of the area of responsibility just to get room to defend ourselves against MiGs uh, that don't know where this line is. This is our line. They have no idea. And we're, in fact, uh, across the DMZ in North Korea. I'm not going to talk very much about the M120 missile, but you should go watch Supernova's excellent YouTube video on the subject and using uh, the fire control radar of the F-16 in both RWS and TWS modes, which we'll do today. Uh, but we will talk a little bit about the minimum abort range and the weapon engagement zone. Now, we do have to know how close we can get to ensure a high probability of kill of our missile without putting ourselves at the same risk from the enemy's missile. So we're going to learn three quick acronyms here, the WES, the WES TA, and the MAR. Weapon engagement zone, weapon engagement zone tail aspect, and minimum abort range. So first, uh, WES TA. The maximum range that a missile will hit a target when fired from uh, the stern position. So if we have two aircraft, everything about them is exactly the same. Their speed, their altitude, they have the same weight, and they have the same weapons. If they're headed at each other, they'll both have to turn around and run the opposite direction at the same distance and time, point in time, uh, or risk running into the weapon engagement zone of each other's identical weapons. So we're talking basically about uh, one aircraft running away and outrunning the missile launched at this guy's tail from the bandit. Uh, what is that distance? Let's talk about the minimum abort range real quick. That's the uh, distance at which you can make a 180 degree turn and outrun a missile that was launched at you. So basically the MAR is max WES tail aspect plus the distance necessary to make that turn and go cold away from the bandit. Obviously you'll continue to go this direction as you turn around before you're able to go back this direction. As a rule of thumb, we can define the distance to execute the standard abort turn as between three and five nautical miles. So therefore, minimum abort range in any given scenario is the maximum weapon engagement zone tail aspect of the bandit's weapon, plus three to five nautical miles. In a BVR engagement, if you want to stay alive and prevent the engagement from turning into a merge, you need to respect the MAR. Hopefully basic MARs can be given at your briefing. So let's talk about that over in this document here, the Vault T-square here. We can look at the MiG-23. We see that we've got a minimum abort range of 12 miles for this guy. And that factors in uh, the capabilities of the aircraft and the capabilities of their various missiles here that they've got. We can also look at the MiG-29 Alpha, which we're facing in this engagement. We can see that their minimum abort range is a bit further, 15 miles. Lots of other useful information about them. For instance, MiG-29 Alphas don't have a jammer. MiG-23, Mike Lima's, can carry some sort of electronic countermeasure pod. Lots of good information here. Accelerate in a turn. These guys are very fast. Let's take a look at the missiles that these guys carry, which also factor into the WES TA and the MAR. So all the way down in the Red Force missiles. So we've got several infrared rear aspect missiles, 
pretty small engagement zones uh, here, one to two miles in the front. Uh, range rear is obviously slightly bigger because they're able to track the exhaust of the jet there. Let's look at uh, these semi-active radar homing missiles. So these might, these R-23Rs might be carried by the MiG-23s, and we can see that their frontal range is maximum about 10 miles. Their rear range, which factors into that WES TA, is 5 to 7 nautical miles. So this plus, uh, you could say 7 plus 5 is 12, which factors into the minimum abort range for uh, the MiG-23. So that factors in 5 miles for us to turn around from hot to cold aspect and seven miles for this R-23R, also known as this Alpha Alpha 7 Alpha Apex missile, to be launched at our tail and, and come and try and get us. So that's where they get that WES tail aspect from. So back to the training document. Now that we've briefed the MARS, the minimum abort ranges on these two aircraft, let's talk about the crank maneuver real quick. This is a maneuver intended to increase the range between the shooter, us, and the target, the bandit, after our missile launch. How are we going to increase the distance between ourself and the target at the time of missile impact? Well, that's very easy for us, the F-16 with the AMRAM, because we do not have to continue to support the missile with our big radar in the nose of the jet all the way until missile impact. In fact, we can break off early, and that is shown down here. I'm going to look at that first. We can fire the missile. We can crank off to the side, support that missile with our radar, which is cranked off to the right-hand side of our nose, it's called being at the gimbal limits. The bandit is not only over at the extreme side of your fire control radar, they're over on the right hand side in this case, but they're also over at the extreme side, about 50 or 55 degrees maybe, off of the nose of your aircraft if you're doing a good crank, uh, depending on if that's how the angle you want to take. Now look what that does to us. That puts us over here, and the aircraft has turned away and dragged. Now, what point did that happen? Well, that happened back here when the missile went pit bull. So here we can see the crank maneuver. The aircraft has fired, cranked, is over here. The missile has gone pit bull, meaning that it's supporting itself. It's taking care of its own stuff now with its own radar. It is no longer helped at all by us being pointed at all in this direction. So we're free to turn cold. Fire at the bandit when you're hot aspect. Give the missile the best chance of success. Crank off to the side to support the missile and reduce the distance between you and the bandit by the time the missile goes pit bull so that you can then drag and reset and get over here and you have to turn around later and see if your missile had any effect. Ideally your wingman's coming up to support you from behind and is still outside of the minimum abort range. So you can see how this will keep you, if you're careful and if you fire your missile at the right time, this will keep you from entering into the minimum abort range. If this is MiG-23, a 12 mile radius out front of this guy. There are a few terms here. There's the F pole the A pole, which they talk about sort of incorrectly here. I think they're referring to the M pole, which is technically when the missile goes pit bull. All of these terms are defined in Supernova's videos, but also in this AMRAM pilot guide document, which I will link to as well. So this is called When Should You Chuck Your Spears, referring to AMRAMs. It goes into all the terminology, talks about all the launch criteria, your likelihood of killing the bandit based on when, how close you are to the bandit when you launch talks about the A-pole, M-pole, F-pole, etc. If we go back into the vault, so page 64 has this wonderful diagram here. I've edited this here. This is a depiction of the dynamic launch zone for the AMRAM at a given point in time. So this is a snapshot. At this point, the fighter, the good guy, you are 29.9 miles away from the aircraft. It gives you a note here. This is your current distance to the target. Abort before you get to the MAR. So yes, you should watch this to make sure you don't cross that minimum abort range. How do we know when to shoot the missile in the first place? Well, we're watching this one number right here. If we can get this down as close to the MAR as possible, so 12 miles before we fire, or maybe 13 or 14 for the MiG-23, that is going to give us a very high probability of kill, especially if we're going very fast and uh, if we're very high altitude relative to the bandit. So this, they say, is the distance from the target when missile goes active. Well, what do they mean? This is really a predicted distance from you to the bandit when a missile launched now is predicted to go pit bull. This is basically saying if you launch a missile now, it's predicted that the missile's radar will take over when the aircraft, if nothing else changes between the two aircraft, are at 16 miles apart. Okay, So you fire a missile now, 
there will be 16 miles between you if nothing else changes when the missile's radar takes over and you're free to turn around and go cold. Now we know we're probably going to crank, so we're going to fire and we're going to crank off to the side, which is actually going to increase this a little bit. So in the engagement here, I'm going to try and wait till 12 miles here at the predicted M pole before I fire for the MiG-23s and 15 for the MiG-29As. And then I'm going to crank off to the side, and I will try my best to watch this distance here and make sure I don't get uh, closer to the bandit than is safe. However, the bandit has a is at a huge disadvantage relative to us. They have semi-active radar homing missiles, which means they don't get pit bull. They have to stay pointed relatively at us. Uh, their their radar coming off their nose has to be able to see us up to the point of impact of their missile on us. If they can't, because they've been forced to turn around and run away because their radar warning receiver warned them of our incoming AMRAM missile, okay, then they're going to snip their missile and it's going to be completely trashed. Their missile has gone stupid. It has no effect. It doesn't matter if it's 10 feet from us. If it hasn't detonated at that point, it's not going to hit us. So that's the beauty of going up with uh, AMRAMs against bandits that only have semi-active radar homing missiles. So let's jump back to the training real quick. We're going to look at one more thing, which is the target locator line. We are going to watch the degrees, which are listed here. You can see the gun cross and the target locator line points to the target, maybe in your HUD, maybe outside of your HUD somewhere, uh, from the gun cross where the nose of your jet is pointed, and then the angle is measured here. There's a triangle between, you know, basically your nose, uh, where the bandit is, uh, uh, your nose, and where it's pointing out in space, a line drawn from there to the bandit and then back to your nose. That's a triangle. So there's an angle of 50 degrees there at this uh, vertex here. We need to keep this below 55 or the, our radar may not be able to track the bandit. And as you can see here, we've got M05. That's five seconds until pit bull displayed here. So if we snip the missile now, because we crank off and suddenly we're 60 degrees off nose, this missile may not ever reach the radar active state, and we'll probably have a very low probability of kill.